I converted one of the example apps from my course to use Angular's signals, at least with what is available so far in the preview we have today. We don't have things like signal inputs yet, and I implemented my own janky version of From Observable. So while refactoring this application to signals, I had a pretty drastic change of opinion about what signals might mean for RxJS in Angular. And I'll get to what I think is the ironic consequence of signals in Angular shortly, but first we are going to need some context which this little application refactor can provide for us. I won't get into the details of the app too much, but it's kind of a more complex version of a typical to-do app. Rather than to-dos, there are checklists. Uh, you can create multiple checklists and each checklist can have multiple items and each item can have a completed state that can be toggled. So this application was coded in the typical reactive declarative style I advocate for. And as usual, it used RxJS and observables to achieve that. So if you want something to be declarative, then it needs to contain all of the information about what it is in its declaration. Everything we need to know about this is right here. It is never imperatively set from anywhere else in the code, so there is no surprises. But applications often have this awkward thing where users are allowed to interact with them and change things. So if we want to write things declaratively, but we know data is going to change after it is declared, then we need some kind of reactive mechanism that allows us to define upfront how this will react to changes if the data it depends on changes. So this is a role that RxJS has typically filled in Angular, but now we have a new option in Signals. So what does using Signals for this declarative style look like? The refactoring work for this app looked something like this. So I took all of my behavior subjects, which were responsible for holding my state like checklists and checklist items, and also things like whether a modal is open or not. And I replaced all of those behavior subjects with Signals. Anytime I would have nexted one of my subjects, I now either just use the set, update, or mutate method on the signal. Set and update is what I use most of the time. Set just allows you to set whatever value you want, and update provides you with the old value so you can supply a new value based on that old value. But mutate is also interesting because it gives you a reference to the object that you can then directly mutate. For example, I use that here to just push a new element into the array, rather than having to recreate the entire array with an immutable approach like this. I also replaced all of my derived state like this, where the map RxJS operator is used to modify the value in some way. And I replaced all of those with computeds, which is a way to derive a new signal based on values from other signals. So anytime the signals the computed depends on update, the value for the computed will be recalculated as well. And this is a key part of that declarative idea of declaring up front how a particular value will update when the data it depends on changes. So all the information about what this value is and how it updates is contained right here. I replaced any side effects I had on streams that utilize the tap operator with the new effect method, which allows you to execute some code whenever any of the signals it depends on change. So this is similar in concept to the computed, but for running arbitrary code in response to changes, not for calculating a value. And I even had the chance with this app to try converting some observables to signals, which I did here to pull out the params from the route using a signal and fetch an item based on that rather than using a switch map with RxJS as I was before. So the end result of this refactor was that all of the RxJS I was using in my application had disappeared. Now this won't always be the case. It just so happens that this application is only dealing with local data and everything can be done synchronously. If you're dealing with async stuff, then you're not going to be able to code fully declaratively without something like RxJS. Okay, so now it's time to get into hot take territory. So even if this application did have asynchronous event coordination stuff to handle, like firing off HTTP request APIs, uh, the sorts of things that RxJS is fantastic for, you still wouldn't be forced to use RxJS. I would use it because I think it is a good idea and many people would choose to, but you are not forced to. And this brings me to what I think is ironic about signals in Angular. I think signals will make RxJS integration in Angular much better, but I also think signals might just decrease RxJS adoption overall and that most Angular developers won't use RxJS at all. So with signals, we can handle maybe 90% or more of the situations we run into just fine, as was demonstrated by this refactor. Then we have those 10% of situations that RxJS can handle beautifully for us, 
situations that require coordinating asynchronous events like the searching example I talked about in the last signals video. And this is as it should be. The simplicity of signals in most cases and the power of RxJS where required. Only that last 10% can also just be ignored at the cost of some potential bugs and UX issues in your application. Or maybe you aren't ignoring these issues or are forced to deal with them due to bug reports and just have some more complex or messy imperative code to handle situations that RxJS could handle with a single operator, like retrying a request if it errors, cancelling requests in progress, and so on. So it's not optimal, and it's not what I would advocate for, but realistically, this is what is already happening in most code bases. My perception is that most people don't know about or don't care about declarative code, and there is nothing wrong with that, and most people are simply ignoring the types of issues that RxJS deals with. So RxJS is powerful and beautiful in its simplicity once you are familiar with it, but it is hard to learn. I think the reason we see RxJS adoption much more heavily among Angular developers and not in other frameworks is simply because Angular developers have always been forced to use it to use core parts of Angular. Now we are going to a situation where RxJS integration in Angular is going to be a lot better thanks to signals, but at the same time, people are no longer going to be forced to use it right out of the gate or likely ever. I think RxJS might just become this sort of end game level thing you learn in your Angular skill tree, something that maybe most developers don't use except those especially interested in things like declarative coding. And maybe that's a good thing. I think it's better to not use RxJS at all than to be forced to use it and not use it properly. RxJS can be a foot gun in that way, where if you don't have a good understanding of it, you can create a hard to debug mess. And by not forcing RxJS upon people, maybe when they do cross paths with it, it will be because they want to learn it and they won't already hate it. So this is such a fascinating time in Angular's history and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, where do you think Angular is headed with Signals and RxJS? And where would you like to see it head? And if you enjoyed this video at all, please consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you around for the next video.